no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. That something remarkable is happening to us this afternoon. That for as far as you have come, surely that that is a sign that you have placed a demand on God to do something no man can do. I sense this afternoon many mantles from heaven are falling uh, in every aspect and field of life I feel that every man at the sound of my voice you're going to walk back home in a weightier glory than you came in we are connecting to something deeper than we have ever seen in our country something deeper than we have ever seen in Africa Africa. I thank you Holy Spirit for the miracles that are happening this afternoon the healings that are taking place this afternoon the salvation that is taking place this afternoon in Jesus mighty name we pray and believe in all sense Come on, I want you to take five seconds and greet your neighbor on the left and on the right. And tell him you are welcome. You are welcome to the men gather. Season seven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I don't hear you. Glory to God. We have people from across the region. We have people from all the way from Rwanda. Where are those from Rwanda? We have people from Burundi. We have people from Kenya. We have a group from South Sudan. We have a group from the United States. We have a group from South Africa. We have a group from Northern Ireland. Everywhere across the world. Where have I missed? Jamaica! Jamaica! Oh yes, they're here. Where, where, are where haven't I mentioned? Where we so get United the, Kingdom! United Kingdom, Bungereza. Where haven't I mentioned? Where? We so get the, where, are where? Tanzania! Where are you? Tanzania! I saw Tanzanians last Tanzania. night. Tanzania! Barbary! You're welcome. Hallelujah. A buffalo. Uganda is here. Uganda. <laughs> come on, come on. Uganda is here. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. All our ministers are here. All our ministers, the planned ministers of the conference are here. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. But before I invite the first minister, allow me to ask you to give a thunderous April celebrating the men, pastors, evangelists, bishops who are here. Come on, let's celebrate them. Come on, that's, that's for the bishops, the pastors. 
I won't mention names because if I mention names, Pastor Kalisa won't be happy with me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But you are all welcome. We love you. We honor you. We celebrate you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to call all the men who are in the serving, uh, uh, serving places, people who are in the exhibition hall, people who are donating blood, those of you who are sitting except you're using the lavatory the lavatory except you are easing yourself we want every man seated it is easier to get men seated. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we want all men to get your seats. There are extra seats that they are going to bring. We have a few extra the other side. We have trouble with the pavilion because of the trees. So we'll try as much as possible to see what we can do down here. And so gentlemen. I, I have a wonderful friend all the way from Kenya. Kenya. Hallelujah. All the way from Kenya. Kenya. He's one of the rising voices in that land. A distinctive mark in East Africa. Both for the spiritual revival and, and the economic empowerment of this region. God has distinctly anointed this vessel. And I have seen by God that we're going to do a lot of things together for the region and the world. He's a man who has my heart. He's a man you will love and understand. So join your hands with me and let's welcome the Reverend Bishop Doctor Evangelist Prophet Julian Julian Kula. Come on. Sibaulida. Let me hear you. Siva Ulida. 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 Let me hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uganda, praise the Lord. Uganda, mukama yeva I am so blessed to be here. Bana indi wa mukisa nyoku beda wano. I'm blessed to be in the midst of my brothers. Indi wa mukisa nyoku beda maseka tiga baganda bangi. I don't know where else I could have spent this weekend. Simani walala we nandi ba deku weekend yeno. Except with you. O kujako kubeda wano amuna mwe. So I want to thank my dear friend, Apostle Lubega, his lovely wife and family. Come on, let's appreciate the servant of God. To all the men and women of God present, I salute you. Now, as always with preachers, we, we start very slowly. And then after 25 minutes, we say, I can't believe time has gone. So let me start. I want us to read scripture and then we can sit down. Is that okay? Please come with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I want to read from verse 10 to verse 20. Thank you. Let's appreciate the sound and the worship team. That was so beautiful. Thank you.
Let's read together. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand Stand therefore having guarded your waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Father, thank you. When men gather like this, nations change. Thank you for this amazing opportunity to just share your word with your children. I give myself away to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have your blessed seats in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, um, I'm here to stir up something in your lives. I didn't necessarily come to bring a foreign thing. One time I keep telling this story, so let me tell it in Uganda for the second time. One time I was offered a cup of tea by some, someone very close to me. And then I took the tea because I like taking tea. And when I took the tea, I, I, I realized it didn't have sugar. And when I took the tea, I said to them, how did you give me tea without sugar? You know I like my tea with sugar. And the lady came and said, I put sugar, I tell you, I put sugar. So I took it again and I said, there's no sugar. So we had to investigate the matter. And very quickly we realized there was sugar, but it wasn't stirred. So I came today to do something in Uganda. The sugar is there. We're just going to stir it up a little bit. Because the world is waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. And I want to deal with something very, very heavy. In the best way I know how to. Within these few minutes, may the Holy Spirit give me the ability to speak the words I need to speak to benefit those that are here. Now, the, the role I have in Christendom in this season and time is bringing an understanding between priesthood and kingship. 
Because I think we have for so long separated the two. But the book of Ecclesiastes 1.1 helps me when I understand that Solomon was both king and priest. So before I, before I come back to Ephesians, let me just deal with something very quickly. Jesus said, all authority of heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe what I have commanded you. So the question here is on sovereignty. We need to understand this whole understanding of sovereignty. The sovereignty of God is that he is ruler over all creation. And so as I handle some marketplace items, I will deal with them from a priestly perspective. Because this gathering of men has a theme that is priestly. Mm. And so in understanding, the Bible says, by this you shall know that the Lord of heaven and earth is with you. Behold, the ark of the covenant goes before you. Our disposition must be an understanding that God has gone before us. So what is at stake is the sovereignty of God. I want to show you what affects us. I've done a couple of rounds in the market. God has helped me to be able to open my eyes and see some things. The things I've seen were not so that I can amass anything for myself. Because I've come to an understanding according to Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2. That the grace that has been given to men is for men. In traveling the world, I've been able to understand systems. I've taken the time to study those systems to begin to understand what is our positioning around these systems. So what affects us is that there are always forces that are up against the children of God. That is why the struggle of a salon started by a Christian is not the same as the struggle of a salon started by an atheist. Mm. This is why when you start a restaurant as a brother, it is not going to face the same war as other restaurants are going to face that don't have the whole element of a child of God. I have taken time to study um, my dear brother, Apostle Grace. Because even in this type of understanding relationships become very important. In studying seasons and times, we get to see what God is really beginning to do with a generation. So when I study the Bible, everything in the Old Testament is a picture of something that is to do with Christ. Either for or against Christ, but there is an association. So every time you saw Jesus do something, there was a confirmation of what had happened in the olden times. Let me give you a quick example. When you see Jesus feeding people with bread, study the scriptures. It's not just any regular occurrence. If you study, you'll always discover that the giving of bread was close to Passover. When you see him healing a woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, it's a picture. 
It's a picture. He says, I never do anything I have not seen my father do. So we must come into this understanding that everything Jesus was doing was a picture. So if she's 12 years with an issue of blood, the Bible tells us that she had to struggle to touch the hem of his garment. But this person who had come, Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. A priest. And so in this understanding, the Bible tells us that while this woman interrupted Jesus, Jairus' daughter died. But the Bible records Jairus' daughter was 12 years old. Picture. So, the woman who had the issue of blood had an issue that started 12 years ago the day Jairus' daughter was born. So when you start to look at what Jesus is doing here, the picture of the woman with the issue is showing us the old picture. Because the problem of the old covenant is that the issue was blood. And blood had to struggle. They had to struggle. To be able to touch the throne, they had to struggle. There was commotion. There was struggle. And there was human effort. So in the old picture, there was a lot of traffic that you had to go up against. But when he gets to Jairus' daughter, the issue is not blood. The issue is death. And there you begin to see death and resurrection. Are you understanding me so far? So everything Jesus did was a picture. But when you look at the woman who had done everything she could do, she had paid every physician, there were no answers, and she had to struggle to touch Jesus. But with Jairus' daughter, Jesus came where she was. The matter was a matter of death. So in the new covenant, you cannot ignore the association of death and resurrection. So the whole understanding of sovereignty is that there is a picture in the old covenant that begins to show us what our struggle is today. The book of Judges is filled with these struggles. When I go through the book of Judges, I begin to see certain things. I start to see a man called Othniel. And the Bible says that Othniel has to do with Kushan Rishatam. In Joshua, in Judges, Judges chapter 3 verse 9. Who was Kushan Rishatim? He was the king of Aram. And the Bible tells us that this was a king that had raised up against the children of Israel. This Aram, which is Mesopotamia, eventually became Babylon. So, God raises a man called Othniel. Puts his spirit in the man. And all of a sudden, Babylonic systems are given to the hand of Othniel. The Bible says the Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel. This was the brother of Caleb. And there was deliverance. And I want you to understand that it is clear to me that the book of Judges is a picture. There's a second person in the book of Judges. When you look at that, you will remember there's another man there. There's a man called Ehud. 
Ehud came up against a man called Eglon. Ehud ya ya ja wa kanyo msaja itwa Eglon. Eglon was a fat man. Eglon yali msaja munene. And he was also a type. Atenga na icha ali chifa. Who had risen up against the children of God. Yali yakoloko kede kubana ba Israel. And God put his spirit in a man called Ehud. Katona na te komo yo kumsaja itwa Ehud. As you study judges. Wo so betsa muchaba na muzi. When you come even into people like Gideon. Wo tuka kumsaja nga Gideon. You begin to see that there are deliverers that are there that are being given to men. Otandi ko chira bantu wali wa bantu That means that any time any man comes up against the sovereignty of God's rule in children of God There is a redirection in a generation uh, Let me come to what I'm came I came to do in Uganda Uganda The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 that we have when you look at that you start to see we, which we worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand please come with me i'm building this to somewhere he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places now come with me to ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 say reverend what does this have to do with the marketplace tell your neighbor just flow says and raised us up together uh, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus I said the issue is sovereignty the moment babylon is sitting on god's people the sovereignty of god among men is interfered with and so god has to raise a people priests kings and he chose the pearl of africa as the venue for which these priests are going to rise and bring change and are shaking because vanga When God took the systems of Babylon he gave them into the hands of Ehud. Gave them into the hands of Othniel. Gave them into the hands of Gideon. Something is about to happen in our generation. The question is This is an understanding of something I want to call a union. Please I want you to understand something. Worship does not set you apart. Because I know people that worship cows that take their cows more seriously than we take God. I can show you people devoted to a hill more than believers are devoted to their God. So this thing has to be deeper than worship. There has to be an understanding. This thing is bigger than just a creator and his creatures. To be able to come into the mind of God regarding a generation this thing has to be bigger so there are some serious steps that we need to understand that there is the death of Jesus there's the burial of Jesus there's the resurrection of Jesus and this is an understanding that these particular dimensions are critical to every believer if you go into the marketplace without understanding death burial and resurrection you're already facing a battle that you will not understand so this thing must be studied because the bible says he raised us up and made us sit in the heavenly places which means this place is achievable 
which means if it has been written there can be men seated today together with Christ in heavenly places it is attainable because it has been written so men must study any time that they are not seated in that place we must study and understand why are we not seated there I've studied this thing and realized it's not about shouting I am the head and not the tail. I've studied and realized that some things we will shout and we will celebrate but there are things that must answer to some understanding. Because the Bible says my people they perish for lack of shouting. My people, they perish for lack of humility. My people, they perish for lack of uh, knowledge. So we have gathered here in this beautiful, warm Ugandan sun to receive some knowledge. Now please, come with me. There are some serious steps we're going to take today. Now, when we talk of the burial, that deals with the old creation. So that sin is dealt with in the burial. When we talk about resurrection union, what is taken care of there is death. So I cannot be touched by death. Then I look at this understanding of um, the 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 death, the burial, the death, and the resurrection. And now, I want to introduce what we just read in Ephesians. We deal with the ascension. Apostle, I studied and realized most people deal with death. They deal with burial. They deal with resurrection union. But we have not dealt with ascension. Today I came to deal with ascension. Because some Battles we are facing require operation on a different realm. Let me deal with ascension, exaltation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Coming to the throne. Understanding this place. What does it do? The world system. The Babylonic system is an earthly system. So, the prince of this world specializes on what is going to happen on that earthly system. But Jesus has taken man and put him in a new place. So, it is possible through this meeting today for men to enter a new place. It is possible for us to move from a particular dimension and to ascend. Because if it were not so, it would not be in Ephesians 2.6. When I study this, it is not for people that are dead physically. This position is possible for people that are alive and hearing my voice right now. There is true power in this place. He is sitting at the right hand of God. And he is bringing many sons into glory. So, at this point, man is not dealing with the regular things that every man is dealing with. God's idea is to bring every man to that position. I need you to tap your neighbor next to you and tell them we're not leaving you behind. Please find a neighbor that's not jealous and tell them I'm not leaving you behind. We are going somewhere today. There are certain things that have to die today in the name of Jesus. 
What happens? I need two volunteers. I need one down here and I need one up here, please. The Bible says that he has made us which means my brother down here by lack of conscience and understanding is operating in a lower dimension but he is saved. So there's a knowledge I can achieve that raises me up and whereas the two of us are saved, our struggles and the way we look at life are different. Can I continue? So, no, 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 don't go away, don't go away. You're my specimen, you stay there, sorry. We are going to work together today. So, when we understand this place. Come, come closer. When we understand this place, our consciousness changes. Certain things change. Our spiritual dimension changes. At this point, we are not just wrestling with flesh and blood. At this point, you've entered another dimension of spiritual forces. Even though they may not be seen, there are forces working at this point that are not necessarily working at this point. For the sake of the people at the back seeing you, do you mind coming up here? Then I'll raise him up. Either way, you're higher. Okay. So, let's, let's go to work. So, what is the enemy doing? This whole thing is about the throne. God wants to bring as many sons as possible to the throne. So the enemy's work is twofold. Is to either keep you from accessing the throne. Can you try to come up? Can you try come up? Turn, turn, turn around. Try come up. I keep you from coming to the throne. So who is this? This is a saved person that has tried business, has tried marriage, has tried all the things that he's told to try, has been tithing like he's been told to tithe, has been planting like he's told to plant, but the level never seems to change. So the enemy has perfected keeping him down here. The suppression of the economic systems and Babylonic systems are one of the greatest tools of the enemy to keep the children of God from ascending. So down here, going round, goes round, opens one business, tries his hand at a relationship, tries his hand at brothers and sisters to pray for him. But he's going round and round and round. Today we are going to circumvent every plan of the devil on your cycles. And I want you to look at a brother next to you that looks like they are going to ascend. Because there are two dimensions. The earthly dimension and the heavenly dimension. So we'll call these earthlies. And we'll call these heavenlies. Are we together? Can you look at the earthly next to you and tell them how is it doing on earth? Earth. Ask the earthly next to you, how is earth going? Because as long as you're on the earthly dimension, you're not necessarily going to deal with the wiles of the devil. You will deal with the snares of the devil. So on the earthly level, Satan knows because you haven't ascended even a miniskirt is enough to keep you here. Let me try this side. Hey. 
Satan knows that as long as he can give you a little bit of change and some money, he can give, he can keep you down here. Because his plan is to make sure that he keeps you from ascending. And if you have ascended, his plan is to make sure he brings you down. But the tactics he deploys here are different from the tactics he deploys here. Pastor, what does this have to do with the marketplace? I'm coming. So, at this level, Satan wants to deprive you of position to get you down from the position. Because if there's no throne, there's no power. And the kind of authority God wants to release on us is not the kind of authority for running a small shop. If you understand the dimension that God wants to release on men today, it's not even for supermarkets. This is a takeover generation. But the enemy wants to make sure you don't even have a picture of what it looks like. So he wants to keep you down. He wants to make sure that he uses every effort to frustrate, to nullify. So, at the heavenly dimension, this person has left the earthly things. <laughs> has started moving in a different understanding. This person needs different tactics from the enemy than this person. And when you start to understand this, he changes tactics. So it is at this level that we find the conflict of Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 is not for this level. Romans chapter 7 is for the earthly dimension. The certain conflict we have in our hearts in Romans 7. Can you take me to Romans chapter 7 and give me the message version? Can we go now? Romans chapter 7. Do you have the message? Yes. I'm trying to find the scripture about the things I'm trying to do, I don't do. Take me to verse 8. Ha. Do, don't you remember how it was? No, 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 this is not it. Uh, can you go to verse, take me to verse 15. I think you were right there. What I don't understand about myself is I decide one way, but then I act another way. Doing things I absolutely despise. This is not the dimension of a reason person. Continue. So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes necessary that God's command is necessary. Keep going. But if I need something more, I, I, I know the law, but I can't keep it. Are we together? So at this level, a million shillings bothers you. God said to me something powerful. The day one billion shillings and one shilling are the same thing to you. I'm ready to begin using you. Our greatest death in Africa is the death of something I call individualism. Every person is trying to get it for themselves. That is not the mindset of a person person that has ascended. He says, I need something more. I know the law, but still can't keep it. And the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions. I obviously need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. So, I can will it, but I can't 
do it. This is what the enemy does. On this level, you keep trying to do those things, but you don't get to do them. And then he says, I want to finish this. I decide to do good, but I really don't do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. <laughs> My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. So can you give me a small rope or something that I can use, something that I can tie with if you can? I'll appreciate something if you can give me a prop up here. So this is what is happening. And this is what we've come to deal with today and I believe it's going to happen today in Uganda. If you can give me anything that can look like a rope, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, sir. This is perfect. This is perfect. So, 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 so here's the earthly. We're going to tie your legs, sir. Just one. So, at this level, come. You have to understand that the enemy specializes at this level in making you think that there's movement. But eventually you realize your movement is limited to the yoke that he has on you. So you move. Hmm. You might even go to Kenya. You might go to Tanzania. You might go to Rwanda. But you're back here. So you're consuming time and energy. But there's no progress. Tap a neighbor, say the devil is a liar. So your family is trying to make, you're, you're, you're a man, you're trying to make ends meet in the family. The struggle is real. You are limited to a certain perimeter. Your decisions such as they are don't result in actions. You're putting every effort. But there's no progress. There's energy, but there's no progress because you have a limitation based on the things that he keeps throwing at you. So when you try to make progress, he throws money because the earthly level is a level that money affects. This level is a level that, that women affect. And when he sees that you're beginning to discover him, he he takes you to a new perimeter. He takes you to Canada. Because you assumed if you leave Uganda, that you will still go far. But you find out you're still ending up in the same circles. I told you to tell your neighbor the devil is a liar. So you find the problems of Uganda have followed you to Canada. So he now brings you to America. And you say, finally I've come. Geographical relocation does not mean ascension. What you need to understand, there is a level playing field on this earthly dimension. That no matter what you do on this level, there are certain things even in the marketplace you will never attain at this level for the kingdom of God. So the enemy keeps throwing familiar things at you. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was not exempt. Says, if you are the Son of God, cast these stones into bread. But Jesus didn't just die. Jesus just didn't die. So, you drive from Kampala to Juja and you think you have achieved much but you're still on the ground. This thing only changes. Listen. It doesn't matter if it's a Datsun. It doesn't matter if it's a Lamborghini. If it's on this ground, it is being driven. What will make people look at a Datsun differently? Is the day a Datsun takes off. 
they will write about it because it has left a particular realm and entered another one. My brothers, we're not just going to do business. We're not just going to do kingdom business. I believe the men gathered here are the ones with the answers on how Africa is going to pay its debts. I believe the men seated here are the ones that are going to answer presidents. Are the ones that are going to change the story of Africa. Because I have a conflict going on in my mind. How is it, I'm preaching now, how is it that the, 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 the continent with the highest saved people per capita, that you cannot find this many saved people anywhere in the world except Africa, has the highest infant mortality rate, the highest poverty rate, the highest, the highest uh, unemployment employment rates, the highest corruption, something has to change. So, I believe the gathering of our fathers was a Moses gathering. But the gathering of sons is a Joshua gathering. Please understand me. There's nothing wrong with a Moses gathering. But the occupation of a Moses gathering has to do with deliverance. The gathering of a Moses has to do with coming out of Egypt. The coming out of the, 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 the business of Moses has to do with we need to make sure that we can come out of Egypt. So their meetings and their gatherings, if you check their minutes, is not the same business as a Joshua generation gathering. So, Kati. It's a mistake when a generation wakes up and doesn't understand the seasons and times. Because that generation will begin to do a Moses thing in a Joshua time. And God wants us to understand the strategies are different. He said, just as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Not what I did with Moses. In the time of Moses, manna was falling from heaven. So in the time of Moses, we could take a picture of a child malnourished without good hair and with five flies on the face get on a plane go to a wealthy nation and say, oh, help us. But in a Joshua time, In a Joshua time, Africa's time has come. We don't go there to ask for aid. So, when you are in a Joshua time, and you're asking for aid, you're in trouble. When you're in a Joshua time, in a Moses time, God parts the Red Sea. Nobody got wet. Nobody. When they got to the other side, they were dry. Come to Joshua. In a Joshua time, they put their feet in the Jordan and they got wet. This means this is not the time not to get wet. Mm. This is the time that we will find an angel on the other side. The Bible says as soon as the last lad crossed over, manna ended. Which means, we were waiting on the food to just come and enter our land. But now we have to fold our sleeves. And we have to go to work. This is not the season. 
The wells in other markets are drying up. If you're still building a church and relying on Western donations, you are too late. You will be frustrated. I'm trying to help us. Because seasons have shifted. Something has changed. And we are riding the wave of what God is doing in a generation. So, it behooves us, it behooves us as a people to understand that He has ascended us to and made us sit together with Christ in heavenly places. That means even in economic dimensions. By the time a Joseph enters Egypt, the system of God has entered Egypt. So it means if they, if they thought they had seen business dimensions, the system of Mesopotamia was put in the hands of Othniel. This is about systems and sovereignty. I came to announce it in Uganda. The systems of this world, the kingdoms of this world, they have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. So, this is not the season to take 15 years to build a small church. Just hold on. Are you, are, you, are you understanding me? What, what do you want to take it? Am I going too far? Are you okay? Are you okay? This is not the time. You know, see me, the kind of operations we need to be operating in this season are supposed to shake systems where we can ensure that there's no one in the kingdom without a job. How is it that people take their children to university and have to rely on the Mesopotamia system, the Babylonic system, to give us work? I want you to find an athlete next to you and tell them I'm leaving you here. Today I'm ascending. My children shall not beg for jobs. My grandchildren shall not beg for jobs. Something is being shaken in Kampala, Uganda. Tell them we have to arise. So, Kati, this is not the time to stay on this realm where you can enter a, a company and lose your destiny because of cleavage. There's too much at stake. So we must ascend. The tactics of Satan at this level are that somebody can bring you an envelope with some few shillings and you sell your destiny. But the things that bother people at this level are not the things that bother people at this level. Because at this level, you think generational. At this level, it's not about your big house. At this level, it's about taking over a city. Uh, uh, at this level, it's not about just your school. At this level, is what is God's agenda on the earth for Africa right now? Can you talk to two people next to you that look like they want to ascend? Because we're going to pray in a few minutes. Because here you're bearing the testimony of Jesus Christ. You say, I cannot do those things. On the earthly realm, Nebuchadnezzar will put up a statue. And he will say, everybody must bow. But there are certain people, I don't know if they are in Kampala, that say, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, let it be known to you <laughs> hey. that we will not bow to you. 
Let it be known to you, O King Kabneza, that we have one who will save us. But even if he doesn't save us, we have died and our life is hid in Christ and when Christ who is our glory shall appear we shall appear together with him in the heavenly places no death neither life no riches nothing shall separate us from that place we are about to take off in a minute Somebody is rising in the name of Jesus. Take me to Exodus chapter 17 verse 9. I'm almost done. The Bible says, Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men. This was my assignment in Uganda. Choose us some men. And go out. And fight. With Amalek. The system that is working against your children. Bringing you education curriculums that you should not be endorsing. We are rising to another level. We are saying keep your money. Keep your education systems. The kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. These systems that are compromising our children, causing them to engage in different habits and starting to make our children call different things. No. I'm reminded of a scripture that says that Jesus said that when a demon has been cast out of a person, it goes out. It goes out. Come, come, Rwanda. Come yeah. over here. It goes out. Sorry. Ufuruma. It goes out, and the Bible says that what? it goes out of the man. It goes through dry places Why seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house. Wait, wait a minute. When did this become your house? He says, I will return to my house. Apostle, one of the movies I loved the most was a movie called 300. When the Phoenicians came and surrounded the Spartans. And the Spartan king came. And at some point he looked at his wife. <laughs> and his wife looked at him. To say, our values are not your values. Our system is not your system. Then he lifted his leg. And he kicked the man into the well. And he shouted, this is Sparta. I want you to do something for me. I want us to kick an enemy out of your house. I want you to say, this is not your house. This is not your country. This is not your meeting. Get out of Kampala. Get out of my house. Look, look, look. If you see someone next to you not kicking anything out, <laughs> it's because they're already settled somewhere. It's okay. But if I'm talking to children of God, <laughs> that know that that pornographic spirit that wants to enter your house has to leave today. We are going to another level. Tell somebody I'm going higher. And come up to this place. I want you to lift that right leg right now. Come on, Rwanda. We are going to do this together. And I want you to tell the devil. Get out of my business. Get out of my marriage. Get out of my business. Get out of my education system. Get out of my mind. Get out of my house. Get out of my country. You are a liar. You took the life out of my grandfather. You used cancer on my father. But my life is hid in Christ. And when Christ shall appear, I shall appear together with him in glory. Put your hands together and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. This company of chosen men 
is a company of elect ones and the spirit of the Lord put in my heart heavily that when you meet with Apostle Lubega here's what we are going to release over Africa so much is fighting men in Africa at this level depression what shall I do what shall my children eat what shall we Oh, stress in the house. I hear that there's an anointing that has come into this place that can break the yoke. The anointing that breaks the yoke has come to Kampala. And we are declaring where the devil planted the seed of hatred. I see you rising. Yes. He has made us to sit. Today you're not lifting yourself. He's lifting you. He says, and he raised us up together. The work of salvation has nothing to do with you. Sal salvation is a gift from God. Justification is a gift from God. It's a co-opted work. But there's something called sanctification. That's where Joshua reached. When he asked the angel, Are you for us or against us? And the angel said, I'm with you. Let's go to work. This co opted work is you and God rising together, coming to this place, and becoming a son, and sitting, and beginning not to be bothered by the things that bother other men. It is possible for men to ascend. What stresses other men will not stress you, what depresses other men will not depress you. How others do business. Business is not how you shall do business. He said grace sits on men for men. So we've come to release something here. My time is up in about eight minutes. I want to do something. He says choose us some men. Apostle, I came to choose some men. Some men that are going to start what has never been started before. You see, Olaba. God began, I was in Nigeria in January. And the Spirit of the Lord visited me at night and told me, this is the blueprint. I don't have time to break down the blueprint for you. But he told me the first thing I'm driving out of my people is individualism. This is not just about you. Grace sits on men for men. God has to know that this thing is bigger than your house. Bigger than your need for rent. Bigger than your need to build a, a company for yourself. This is a kingdom movement. It's not about individualism. The second thing he said, I'm going to remove from them the greed system of Mesopotamia. Because Apostle, I've raised a lot of money for my companies over the years. And as I told you, I've studied that system. It's skewed against the system of God. It doesn't work for the things of God. We can't be paying interest at 25-30%. It is not feasible. So God wants to release on us our kind of banks. God wants to release some serious engineering designs that have never been seen before. And he has to remove the whole sense of me, myself and I from this equation. Because there's an entire nation that needs to be taken care of. Choose for us some men to take out Amalek. Amalek has been the enemy of the kingdom of God. And God wants to use this meeting today to do that. That's why we talked about the armor of God. I don't have the time. I'm going to leave it there. Listen to me. I believe there are men here today saying I'm tired of this level. 
have gone round in circles. I've struggled. Nothing seems to work. I've put my hand to everything. But I didn't have this ascension understanding. You see over here, the devil doesn't use those other temptations. At this point, I'll show you this. I, I, I close with this. Jesus, three temptations. If you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. It's dealing with the flesh. If you are the son of God, uh -huh, throw yourself from here. The angels, they'll catch you. After all, it says that they will not let you dash your foot against a stone. But they didn't finish the scripture. Satan never finishes the scripture. So, he comes and then he says, if you worship me, I'll give you this kingdom. That shows that kingdoms have a lot to do with worship. So, when Jesus had come from that level, but now was on a different level, the Bible says that he left Jesus for a season. When he came back, he didn't use snares. He used wiles. They're called the wiles of the devil. He comes through a friend. The one who had given a revelation. And he says, Jesus, you don't need to go to the cross. Immediately, Jesus identifies behind this whole thing. That as much as you have a good intention, Peter, that suggestion has come from hell. I'm praying for you that the kind of people you're going to have from now are people who are going to have the will of God in heart for your life. He comes again to Jesus. Jesus is in complete distress. He's sweating blood. Those are wilds now. That's what goes on at this level. Deep stuff. With Job, he came through the wife. There's some attacks you go through at this level. That if you're not founded on the word, the battle of Satan is for the throne. If he is not keeping you from it, he's making sure you can you have to come out of it. But I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Pete, what was that last one? When Samson, Samson had been on this level for so long, the Bible says they didn't notice his hair was growing back. Before he had fallen for the snares. But God had had mercy on him. And without people knowing it, had raised him up. It was a picture. He didn't have the eyes to see. But somewhere his eyes of understanding were open. And he told two guards, put me be 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 beside strong pillars. Guards, guards. Which means some of the favor some of you are going to see will not come from high offices. Strategies will even come from low places. And he got his hands on the pillar. And we find him in the hallmark of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my brothers, rather. <laughs> my brothers, and uh, there are ladies here. My brothers, listen. Today is a day of ascending. We leave the elementary things. We make a conscious decision. Because in Ezekiel 22, 30, he says, I looked for a man, I couldn't find one. The kind of things he has shown me he wants to give us into our hands are beyond our wildest imagination. Systems are coming into our hands. And when they do, we have a responsibility to move into affordable housing with dignity. To move into affordable housing for God's people with dignity. To create jobs. To change how the banking system works. 
If there can be an Islamic bank, surely there can be a Christian bank. If there can be an education system, there can be a kingdom education system that our children will graduate and know that there was a generation that did a Joshua thing and said none of our children shall even last one month without work. I came to Uganda to find such a man. Hey. If our fathers with that struggle, they did their work of deliverance. Ladies and gentlemen, you can only have so many scorpions come out of you. After the scorpion has come out, after you have vomited, rise, dust yourself, and say, Satan, this is not your house any longer. Fold your sleeves and become a builder. I came to look for a man. And there's a grace that your apostle carries in this land and the men of God here that God has decided the pearl of Africa is going to release this grace. Of men who will put their hand on the plow and not look back. We don't have the time to call you to come here. I want you to lift your hand if I've talked to you and if I've touched your heart. Father, see all these hands. Men are saying, I'm ready. Men from Rwanda are saying they are ready. Men from Uganda are saying they are ready. Men from Kenya are saying they are ready. I surrender. They're all to you. Everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, Apostle. I want to just ask a sense in my heart of hearts for you to pray and release grace on. I know you'll be doing something later tonight and we won't miss it. Please don't miss apostles session. Gathering this many men in East Africa, something's happening in our generation. If I can release something on Uganda, it is this death to individuals. And I feel like I must raise a man per country from this place today. So we don't have the time. You must run to me very quickly. If you believe that you're here from another nation and that the Lord is calling you to do something in your nation, please run. What country? Rwanda, what country? Kenya, what country? Tanzania, what country? Congo, Kenya, Kenya, Congo, huh? Malawi, you're all here. Africa is here, South Africa. Release yourselves, lift up your hands. Hey, Baroske Prados, whichever nation you represent, today in the name of Jesus. On behalf of every man that is in this place, I send you forth as a champion for your nation. Go and do what God has called you to do in that nation. Everything the enemy has done in your nation to stop you today in the name of Jesus. We resist it by the blood and we declare you are ahead and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. In Jesus' name. Africa, listen to me. This is a representation of Africa rising. Every time God has wanted to hide something, he hides it in Africa. What they all have 
In some of those countries, is nothing compared to what God is about to do with this continent. As you rise from this place, may God go ahead of you in unction, in assignment, in Jesus' mighty name. Apostle. Somebody say in the name of Jesus I connect to the grace Of this dispensation As the man of God has declared says, I decree and I declare That I go to the next level Of influence Power And affluence I change my realm. I'm aligned to success. Somebody say I'm progressing. I'm advantaged. I'm aligned. I'm positioned. I'm not limited. In the name of Jesus. So I declare upon your life that every word that has been spoken it shall be so. On your lives, in your families, in your ministries, in your businesses, in your dreams, in your aspirations, in Jesus' name. Give him a mighty hand of praise. The next hand clap I want us to give to Reverend Julian. How many of you want this man of God back soon? See the whole Fanero. Fanero and all the other ministers. Praise the Lord Jesus. This is why we come here. To stir things. Like the Reverend said. God gives graces. For men. On men. There is a man carrying a grace that is going to change your ministry and is not seated far from you. That is going to change your dreams and is not seated far from you. You might not meet him today. You might not exchange cards. But in this corporate affair, I believe that tangible graces are being exchanged. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. As he was speaking, I felt the prophetic utterance that the grace to do big, really big, is available. I think what some of the richest men in Africa are here listening to me now. Some of the most influential, most prolific voices of the dispensation are listening to me right now. And graces are being exchanged. Mantles are being distributed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the next minister? Let me first get you dancing. Hallelujah. Let me first get you dancing. And then I will invite the next minister. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do we begin with? Timoris. Timoris. The Congolese. I have the man for you. Hallelujah. Asantana Apostle. Many gather! Many gather! Mikono, you rise up your hands. Uh huh. Ah. Aya! Mikono, you! The African Tiger. Papa T. Veloste! Mutoto wa Africa. Kembo Music. The Alpha of Afro Cosmo. Veloste! Shukuma! Amala, 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord. Let's lift up the name of God even more. Yeah. Greatest of all, he is Elohim. And through it all, still the reign supreme. Died on the first and came back in three. The King of Kings, El Shaddai, is living in me. The everlasting home for all humanity. The strength that makes us cope through all insanity. The indescribable gift, king of the ages Leading me as I walk through them life pages I stand from here, he's the cornerstone Never forgotten, he said I'm his own I'm not sitting in the overflow The grace of God flip the switch, I'm in the front row I am who I am, that says the Lord Sharper than the double-edged sword Most high El Elyon High priest, strength of the weak, the world is yours that's who we is. Almighty and powerful. Yeah. Ever, ever he will reign. I call him my own and all. My only own. The one true God, that's who we is. That's who he is. Almighty and powerful. Yeah. Ever, ever he will reign. I call him my all in all. Don't ever think I'm a rapper. I'm a minister. Transformative power, he administers. 
the safer from doom, that's his signature. He's the beginning and end, author and finisher. I live and die for Jehovah Shalom. The God of peace making the past gone. Don't get it twisted, this is his show. He's the son to the righteous, he's the real pro. He was God in flesh, he is the word, amazing grace to all the press. Limitless love and nothing less. The fourth man in the front is greatest of all the greats. Born of a virgin, fulfilling scripture, prophet saw him emerging, surpassing all understanding, God and us merging. Mighty strong, prominent one, we submerging. That's who he is. Almighty, and he will bring. Come on. Yeah. He will ring. I call him my own and all. Behold, healing in his wings. True king, go to kings. He loves and don't attach strings. No matter how big your scenes. He's the peace in the storm. The only true platform. Whom his brethren scorn. The very ones that came to transform. Come on. The one true God is who he is. Yeah. Almighty and powerful. Oh, Almighty. And forever he will reign. I call him my all in all. Yeah. The one true God is who he is. Almighty yeah. and powerful. Almighty and powerful. And forever he will reign. I call him my all in all. Yeah. The one true God is who he is. Almighty and powerful. Oh, powerful. On it all, yeah. The one true God is who He is, Almighty and powerful. And forever He will reign. He will reign. I call Him my all in all. Sound boy. Hallelujah. One it came in, come on, we're calling Kulare. Sesina kufana nanga kubide mando le kumanye tili moro kole Sina nga toko soka kwa rove goka kase tili moro kole Yemi uya chuka Situli zibi wempiza kumada Tua chusa Yemioko si uko muviri vya nivya Sewenzi funye seru ya jogamu Masanga kupichi na mpogamu Akagata kalunji nekei wa mune nyuma Sasa musango kulokoka Weite meza wajiju ze soda Singa koko kuna fanta Tatuina musango avali mu yesu wa nange Oh no no Pate ya waru kuri na leriwa Watuba wanundu za tunda Are you ready to sing with me fanelo? Say one, two, let's go Zendi muro Demi sana netiro Oh no no Zi yesu tanso asa He watuba mwantu wena sikala Ndia tulanze Yeah Di moro kule, akadi na iti, akane ba ne ba ne ba di na iti. Di moro kule, lewatu wa muantu eransi gala, wani kakumi kono wati kula be una se di ye ye. Lewatu wa muantu, wuli la simanya matige de. Vino tu simu de Sare ya si uli de Habalo kule muku jetupate We kule kame kapo yake We sara kagoye kopo yonyume Te kako kapafi umochisuke Otambule wa manye Ulira We banaka no kulo kokoru enjiri Banalo kokaru andarika Katimbuza weru mizachi Ya kusendezo Ya tuwachiku ni mugulu ni kunzi Tulimu Wanika nkulabe Gobangoli watitalo mu yesu wanike mikona tulabe Ah, let's go inzi wenzi funye Osanga kubiti ngambuga Akagata kalu Tunaimba Zendimu Emisala netiro Hey, inzi yesu danso anza Dewe tuba mubantu we nansi gala Emisana netio, emisambi neva neva neiva. 
I can never leave, I never leave, I never leave, 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 Mundi mulo kole festival, tugena kuwela uko hockey grounds ilu gogo. Oku ingile mituare vili, mituare tanu letebo ya kakade. Ba studenti, aposo grace ya basa sulideko mutuaro. Buli studenti ingo ina ID, ogena kusasuro mutuaro gumu. Mukama bawe nyomu kisa. Shake somebody and tell him get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Come on, shake them again and tell them get ready, 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 get ready. Yes, gentlemen, take your seats for the next session. Abasaja mwe tu li deko rech tu nwe chita ko. I told you it's boiling uncovered. Naba kamde chito kota si chisa nikire. Hallelujah. Mukama yeba zibwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Mukama yeba zibwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Mukama yeba zibwe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Mukama yeba zibwe. Our next speaker is all the way from Nigeria. Nigeria. Hallelujah. I have known this man for a while now. Man of God for a while now. He's a man whose spirit I love. 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 In such a profound way, a very balanced teacher. You know, uh, the highest vindications of maturity are not in the dimensions of revelation we dispel, but in the balances that we are able to hold. In the wisdom of how much we ought to give. When we have a true estimate of weight of how much men are able to take. Who, who understood it? That is why when Jesus said, do not cast pearl to swine. Pearls were available. Revelation was distinctively available. But to whom was it to be given? So there has to be a readiness of the reconciliation of both. The maturity in the minister to design what God has given him and the people that he's supposed to give it to. At least you beat the air you waste. So when I say balanced, I feel God has given him both the wisdom to see much, but also the maturity to design what he ought to dispense. He's a man I love listening to. He, he's not uh, a very vibrant person. He's the kind you need to follow. When you follow, you'll take so much. Let's raise our, let's rise to our feet. Join your hands with me. As we all welcome the man of God all the way from Nigeria, Nigeria the bishop, pastor, prophet, everything come on let's celebrate this wonderful man of God let's celebrate this wonderful man of God clap your hands and Thank you so much, sir. Amen. First of all, let me say that um, Uganda is a lovely country. Uganda, Gwanga, Yagalwa. 
and um, you are very natural Africans. You are not artificial at all. What you see is what you get. So continue to maintain your spirit. It's a blessing. Let me just say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the presence of your spirit in this place. Thank you for your mighty grace upon this ministry. I ask in the name of Jesus that you grant me utterance to speak as your oracle to interpret the vision of the set man of this house perfectly. That my words will go forth unhindered by any demonic force and, and our hearts will be established in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe Amen. Satan. First of all, I want to extend my deep appreciation to Apostle. Uh, we invited him to Nigeria for the first time um, last year. And his ministry was an instant hit in the country. The question on the lips of every single person. The question on the lips of every person. Is where has this man been all the while? So I thank you for your ministry in the country. Many pastors tell me they now listen to you. And everywhere I go, people, people discuss apostle. Thank you very much for the invitation also. All right, this afternoon for 45 minutes, I want to share on the subject I have been given, which will focus on our priesthood. As men on this earth, we must understand our assignment. God created man in his own image after his likeness and gave him an assignment to dominate the earth, to replenish it, to multiply and to subdue all things. Now, in the Old Testament, there were three offices that men received the Spirit upon to stand in those offices. I will be speaking about those three offices. Focusing on the priesthood. The first was the priest. The second was the prophet. And the third was the king. The business of the priest was to offer sacrifices to God. The business of the prophet was to speak out the mind of God and the business of the king was to go to war, lead the nation and dominate their environment. Today, as Christians and as men, we have the indwelling spirit and we shall function in these three offices. A complete man is a priest, a prophet, and also a king. Now, the work of the priest was always towards God to enter into the courts of God 
and offer sacrifices to God. His work was God word. It was towards God. So when we are talking about your priesthood, we are talking about the nature and quality of the sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices that you offer up unto God. The work of the priest was within the court. The high priest will go within the veil between him and God alone. Therefore, the work of the priest was always done in a secret and that's what Jesus was referring to when he said your father that seeth you in secret that seeth your priesthood shall reward you openly the open reward is your kingly anointing. Your priesthood is always before God and done in a secret. The nature and quality of your spiritual sacrifice that you offer up to God will determine the level of power you will walk in as a king. Let me repeat. The quality and nature of the spiritual sacrifices you offer to God will determine the measure of power that you walk in as a king. So if you see somebody like the apostle getting outward results, what you want to discover is the nature of his priesthood. What prayers is, is he offering up to God? What are the type of sacrifices that he is making before God? Because without that priesthood, trying to operate like a king is acting. So, outward appearance or outward approval that Abel had over Cain was because of the kind of sacrifice that Abel brought which was superior to Cain. God said to Cain, if you had done that which was right, you will have been accepted. So the fraudulence of Abel and the envy of Cain came from their priesthood. What they offered up unto God. Isaac told his son, Esau, Get me the venison I love. Bring to me what I love and my heart will bless you. They are spiritual sacrifices that we bring before God that our Father loves. And based on that, he pours out his blessings upon our lives. So the open reward we see that dominates is the kingly anointing. It cannot be defeated in battle because of the spiritual sacrifices offered up. The victory in the open is based on the sacrifices in secret. 
His work on the outside, the growth of his business, the increase in the work of his hands, proceeds from hidden altars in God's presence. Let me repeat. The growth of his business, the wisdom that he uses, the courage that he shows, comes from hidden altars in God's presence. Now, the prophetic connects the priesthood to so the king. Which means the prophet will bring the word of God so the king and the king uses that in battle. So an example, Jehoshaphat prayed to God. The prophet brought forth the word. Stand still. Jehoshaphat obeyed that prophetic word and they saw massive results. So the order is this. You offer spiritual sacrifices. God reveals his word to you. You act on that revealed word and you see massive results in your life. So the word of God that proceeds from the prophet and powers and guides the activities of the king. Do you understand what I explained? Now? The priest offers sacrifices. God rewards with revelation. He acts on the revelation. And we see massive results. So for men to win, they must function as priests operate with the prophetic word and therefore demonstrate the kingly anointing. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5, it says we are holy priests to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God. And then royal priests so demonstrate his excellencies. We first offer our spiritual sacrifices and the result of that is we can demonstrate things on the outside. So there is the vertical first going up and then there is the horizontal that we demonstrate to men. So let me give a practical example from the scriptures. Let's look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 23 and 24. Now this was Peter and John. They had gone out. They healed one man. They threatened them that they should not preach again in the name of Jesus. They challenge their ability to dominate. So being let go, they went to their own company, reported all the chief priests and elders had said to them, and when they had heard that, see, Holy priesthood. They lifted up their voice to God. So it went up with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God that made heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Then we go to verse 29. And now, Lord, Behold their threatening. Look at what they said. Grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak the word that by stretching forth thy hand so heal signs and wonders 
may be done by thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke the word with boldness. So we see priesthood going up to God in prayer, God responding, pouring out his spirit, then they entered the prophetic, speaking the word boldly. Are you following me? Holy priesthood, you enter the prophetic, you speak the word, then let's look at the kingly anointing. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all in one accord in Solomon's porch. Verse 15. In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets, laid them on the bed that at least the shadow of Peter passing might overshadow some. Next verse. There came also a multitude and they brought their sick folk. Then vexed the unclean spirit. And they were all here. So we see the kingly anointing. The shadow of Peter. Healing the sick. But it started. With their priesthood. Offering up spiritual sacrifices. God responded. Poured out his spirit. Once the spirit is poured out, you enter the prophetic. For he says, in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So he pours it out. Then you prophesy. And then you act. Same thing God did. Before he created man, he said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. He spoke the word. Man didn't just appear. In chapter 2, he went to mold man, formed man from the dust of the ground, which is the work of your hand, under the influence of the spoken word. And then man came alive. So the order is this. Whatever you do with your hands, you must have prophesied over it. You understand what I'm saying here? Listen. Elisha said by this time tomorrow, all these things will happen. He prophesied. Nothing happened. Until four lepers who didn't even hear that word just sat down I said, let's go in here. We may die. We may live. But the chances are, we may live. As they move, that prophetic word manifested itself. So when you go to work, it must be the fulfillment of a prophetic word that you have announced over all your activities so that you get supernatural results. This is what I came to show. The principle of dominion. You offer up spiritual sacrifices. God responds. He pours his spirit out. When the spirit enters, he reveals to you what is going to happen. You announce it and declare it. Then you go out. What you have said, once you start acting, what you have prophesied will be fulfilled. So let me show one more thing here. This is why Paul said in Philippians 1.19 I know that this shall turn 
to my salvation through your prayer the spiritual sacrifice and the supply of the spirit of Jesus. So when you pray God releases the blessing upon you and says I've answered your prayer. If after he pours out his spirit, after he pours his spirit, you don't prophesy, you don't declare, you wonder where the answer is. Now let's go one more step. In the ministry of Jesus, follow this. He never prayed publicly about anything. Listen. He prayed privately sometimes all night. The Bible says a great while before day early in the morning he will wake up and pray alone with God. Nobody saw him physically do it. That was his priesthood to God. But when Jesus comes out in the morning and is walking, when they say somebody is sick, Jesus never said, let us pray. Father, I'm asking you kill this man. When the winds were blowing, Jesus never said, Father, Help us. Calm the storm. What did Jesus do? Peace be still. What did Jesus do? Arise and walk. What did he do? He prophesied. Now, so let me show you what happened. This representation. There's a bottle of water. Let's say the Father. This Jesus. There's humanity. Jesus at night, yes, we chido. His priesthood. Nobody saw him. We we'll pray. God will pour it into him. Yes, unga. He will go out. Na the woman with the issue of blood. Knew Jesus was carrying something. Yesu Jesus did not pray. Yes, she knew he was carrying something. She said, if I touch him, what is inside him will enter into me. Listen to this. Once he touches, what did Jesus say? Virtue and power has left me. Some of that water was poured inside. At night, Jesus will go back for a refill. In the morning, the wind will be blowing. Jesus will say, peace be still. He releases power. He goes back. If you don't go back for a refill, after some time, your power level will be low. The miracles you are doing before, you will not be able to do them again. Because power is living. See, when I was flying here, I wanted to charge my phone on the flight. I took my laptop. It had 98%. I connected it to my phone. My phone had 5%. After three hours. My phone had 88%. The laptop had 27 That laptop, laptop has to be recharged. Now listen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So Jesus will go up secretly. That's why when, he, when some people use the formula, come out! The demons didn't come out. They said, why? Jesus said, there are spiritual sacrifices you have not offered. If you see a sick man, it's not magic. Lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. When you pray for the sick, God heal my brother. God says, I have heard your prayer. He comes to you, pours 
the spirit into you. He says, go and meet the man. Put your hand on that person. What I poured into you, transfer into that body, that body will become healed. If you cannot see that man, then speak the word only and release that thing into the body of that person. Let me give an example. When Jesus got to Lazarus, yes, we took a Jesus did not pray. Yes, to Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. In other words, I have prayed. You have answered the prayer. As far as God was concerned, he had answered the prayer and he had raised Lazarus. Because Jesus said, I thank you because you have heard me. But Lazarus was still in the grave. Because the life of Lazarus was now inside Jesus. Jesus had to release it into Lazarus. So he said, Lazarus, come forth. Many of you have prayed. God has poured his spirit. But you haven't talked to the dead. When Jesus got to the fig tree, he released that substance. No man shall eat fruit of me. And every night, he will go back for a refill. So it's not a formula. It's a fellowship. Why do you think the anointing sometimes you will hear of great men of God 20 years ago and are no longer. What happened? You keep pouring. You keep pouring. You don't get refilled. You don't get refilled. That power diminishes. So your priesthood is what you do before God. The sacrifices you offer, God responds to those things towards his spirit. Then he says, if you will be a king, you must prophesy. You must say, when I lay my hands on the sick, they will recover. You must say, Understand this? What about together? Some of you have jobs you have not called. God has heard the prayer. He is waiting for you to say, Open your window. Job I say unto you, I call you for into this place. Why do you think in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they were in the upper room. They offered up prayers. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. By Acts chapter 4, when they threatened Peter and John, they knew that the level of power may have diminished. They went back to their company. Let us get a refill. When they got the refill and came out again, power went to the next one. So your priesthood is what you do before God. And I just came to share one thing about that priesthood. You do before God that pleases the Father. And the Father knows from this sacrifice you can be trusted. The New Testament tells us Hebrews 13, 6, 16. Hebrews 13, 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. Isaac gave one blessing. Jacob got it. And once that blessing um, was so, given, it is not blessings. It is the blessing. The Bible says Bible in Galatians, Christ, Christ died 
that the blessing of Abraham, not the blessing, one blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. What is that blessing? That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. The blessing that God gave was the promise of the Spirit. If a man has the spirit within, he enters into an office. Because Jacob carried the blessing. He did not have money. He had no possessions on the outside. But he had the blessing. Joseph had no money. No possession on the outside. But he had the blessing. Once he entered, the blessing started manifesting itself. And Laban, said, since you entered here, I have seen an increase because you are carrying the Spirit. When God pours His Spirit into a man, there are two things the Spirit will do. What you are facing is either a wisdom issue or a power issue. If they say somebody will die in six months because of cancer, what is required is power. If somebody says, I want to build a company from Uganda that will grow global into the nations of the earth, you will need wisdom to build it one step after the other to that point. So it's either a wisdom issue or a power issue. Christ is the power and the wisdom. So whatever you are facing is either a wisdom issue or a power issue. If it's a power issue, speak to it and it will respond. If it's a wisdom issue, the Holy Spirit will teach you every day to profit. This microphone, this light, a mobile phone, a sim, are wisdom issues. The Holy Spirit wants to take the church like Daniel that had 10 times more understanding like Jacob like Joseth these men functioned in the marketplace by the spirit of God and they knew things there's wisdom and there's power so let me just close by showing one spiritual sacrifice that is very important. It is the sacrifice of praise. But I want to show that what you sing to God matters. Let me repeat. What you sing to God matters. That's why David said, He has put a new song in my mouth. There are songs that when you sing, Hear what I'm saying? Opens up portals in heaven for certain things to happen. You know when the book was closed? In the book of Revelation, the elder said, Weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book. After they said that, the elders began to sing a song. What is the land that was Slain. Oh, yeah, yes. That was the song oh, they were singing. And Revelation not oh, started coming. There are songs you sing that make certain things happen. I want to show one song.
in second chronicles chapter 5 and verse 13 and it came to pass as the trumpeters and the singers was one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking God when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and instruments of music and praised the Lord saying saying for he is good and his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with the cloud, with the cloud, even the house of God. What did they sing? What they sang was praise the Lord for he is good and his mercy endured forever. You see, what Satan is trying to show, let me give an example. Everybody believes that God is able. The Bible says demons believe and tremble. If you take somebody who has cancer and they said he will die in six months, if you call anybody, can God heal this person? Everybody will say yes. If I say God cannot, Say that. God cannot. God can. God can. You are non believer. God can. If I ask them, will God heal this person? Say they are not sure. In other words, they are not sure. Is able. 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 Because if you see a father that has billions and you see his children eating from a dustbin, what will you say? That father is powerful. He must be a wicked person. That's why his children are living that way. So when you turn to God and say you are good and your mercy endureth forever, you are calling him your father. And that no matter what happens, I say God is good and his mercy endureth forever. Don't forget this. What you see is what will follow you. That's why he says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For what you sing in the courts of God is what will follow you. If you are singing, God is good and his mercy, that goodness and that mercy will be following you. Now I want to show you this. The Bible says the cloud came and they were filled because they praised God saying if I can let me show you the power of saying Mark chapter 7 verse 27 to 29 a Syrophoenician widow came to Jesus that's a gentile and she wanted Jesus to heal her child Jesus said I came under a covenant. You are not a Jew. Let the children first be filled. For it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she answered, Yes, Lord. Yet dogs under the table eat children's crop. Hear what Jesus said. And he said unto her, For this sake, go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. What you say matters. For this sake, go thy way. What you have said has removed. When you go to praise God, there is something called for this sake, of yours. Go thy way. And when you go to him and say, you are good and your mercy endures forever. I applied for a job. They said they are taking five people. We were 40. 
20 of us were Christians. That means some Christians won't get. Even if they take all the Christians. You will not take it. Instead of murmuring, you go back. You are good. And your mercy endures forever. Your love towards me is an unconditional love. And I will not judge you based on what happened on the outside. Because your nature and your character has not changed. You are good. And your mercy endures forever. When you sing that, the glory cloud will hit you at that I'm telling you this. What did Jonah say? Jonah they that observe lying vanities forsake their mercy. He said, but I will sacrifice with a voice of thanksgiving. In other words, in the belly of the whale, Jonah sang, you are good and your mercy endures forever. And when that song entered heaven, God said, fish, Let me show you again that song. Second Chronicles 7 3. And when the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord was upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good and his mercy endure forever. Third time, Second Chronicles 20 and verse 21. Jehoshaphat in the battle, what did he say? And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers that they should praise the beauty of Solid. And they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Look at the next verse. And when they began to sing and to pray, the Lord set ambushments against the children. The song God wants to hear is when things are going wrong. You are good and your mercy endures forever. There is nothing you can do, Satan, that will make me stop saying God is good and his mercy endures forever. And once you sing that in a test to God, while you are going through a test, you sing to him of his love for you. Not your love for him, but his love for you that does not change I am telling you that situation will turn around see when you pray this is what I'm saying when you pray let's say for a job let me just make it easy you ask for a job in the beginning the earth was without form and void the spirit of God hovered over the face of God. Then God did what? He said, let there be light. When you pray for a job, God pours it to you. The reason why a person may not get that job is that the Holy Spirit is leading him to the job that God has prepared. The person is not listening to the Spirit. So he chooses one job. When he chooses that job, they don't give him the job because God has something prepared. When they don't give him, he breaks the covenant by murmuring and complaining. complaining. Where is God? Where is God? God has answered. The whole process stops. But if he kneels down, after they tell him, we are not giving you, he says, God, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. I had it. Listen, many of you know Pastor Adebui. He has a massive camp. I now camp in Nenenyo. Well, let me tell you a small story. Kambabuli de Yakabozka. When he was a lecturer in the University of Lagos, he also takes students to a camp 
in Nigeria. A Nigerian. Beautiful camp. The camp no jibu. The owner of the camp. Nanyini camp told him. Namugamba. We want to sell this camp. Twagala jitu. You are the one we like. We will come with We want to sell it. Twagala jitu. He was happy. Yes, I can. He took off his shoes. Na jacket ngatu. With his students. Na ban. They were walking on the camp. Ni matambuli ya kukampo. Whatever the soles of our feet touch. Uliwona we tulinge. God has given it. Katunda tuwa deo. One day while they were praying, the owner of the camp came and told you, somebody has paid. Can you leave our camp? They carried their shoes and walked out. Every disappointment means what you are believing God for. It's too small for what God has prepared for you. Listen to what I'm saying. When it happens, just say, God, you are good and your mercy endures forever. I don't understand why it happened, but you are good and your mercy endures forever. Say one day, while I was praying, God told me, He said, I miss David on the earth. King David, I miss him. I said, why? He said, nothing happens to David. He will return worship to me. Even when his child died, and I judged the child, when he heard the child was dead, he came back to me. He said, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. He said, because of that, I had to bring Solomon out. From death, I brought out life. From ashes, I brought out beauty. He said, my people are not saying, I am good and your mercy endures forever. There are some things you may not be able to explain. But whatever it is, build an altar to God. Even if it's death, build an altar. And say you are good and your mercy endures forever. And I will close by showing you what Paul was there for saying. Romans chapter 8 and verse 33. This is secret to victory. He says, Romans 8, 33. Who shall lay anything to charge of God's election? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that is risen. That is at the right hand of God. Make an intercession. Now verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Shall distress? Shall persecution? Shall famine? Shall nakedness? Peril? Or sword? Bring tribulation. Bring famine. It doesn't change that God loves me. Do you understand saying? If, if I don't have enough money in my account. It doesn't change that God loves me. I will not judge my account. Use my account to judge God's attitude towards me. Paul said, I know how to abound. I know how to be abased. In whatever, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. Look at what he says next. Next verse. Let me close it. Next verse. Alright. Next verse. He says, Verse 36. For it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for slaughter. They tell us we are finished. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors. Not through us that loved God, but through him that loved us. What we are saying, God wants you to discover. In the heat of battle, you think you will die in that battle. You will know how much God loves you. When you say you are good, when the thing comes out, you will know this God loves you. Let the next one there. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. No height, no depth, no any other creature. If you stop loving me, it doesn't mean God has changed his mind. It is you that changed my mind. God still loves me. You know what I'm if my father and mother say we don't love you again, it doesn't change God. God still loves me. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So always acknowledge that love he has for you. Don't murmur. Don't complain. This is the secret to victory. Paul said all day, we are delivered unto death for Christ. Things will happen. 
People will say things. All kinds of things. But when they happen, you go to God. You are good. And your mess endures forever. You are a father in heaven who loves you. And that cannot change. I don't understand what has happened. You know, one time I told God, I said, what about people's mistakes? What about people's mistakes? When you make a mistake, he told me, if you are going somewhere and you put it in the GPRS system, I'm going here. The voice will come on. Go 100 meters. First turning on the left. Then go for 200 meters. You will see a roundabout. Turn right. If I get to that roundabout, instead of turning right, I turn left. He said, does that voice say, yeah, yeah, what have you done? Ah, 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 the voice is silent. It recalibrates my error into my destination. And then I hear another instruction. Turn right over there. At the end, the mistake might get me faster to my destination. When it's time for testimony, we don't say the whole truth. We make it sound like God. Because we don't want to reveal our nakedness. Because a mistake might have been part of the process that God used to get you to where you are going. To show you that he is the all-knowing God. You are not the all-knowing person. Listen, whatever happens, go on your knees. You are good. And your mercy endure forever. And when you sing that song to him. God will arrange everything. Father, I pray over this people. Blessed people of this nation of with a rich spiritual history. Let everyone under the sound of my voice experience your mercy and your goodness as they sing unto you. That this year, what you have ordained for them prophetically that they have no idea of as they are standing here. Let those things be revealed in their lives through a direct divine intervention by your mercy that it will be seen in their lives. It's not of him that runs, nor of him that will live, but of God that showeth mercy. God bless you. Come on, let's get to our feet. And his mercy shall endure. Come on, let's thank God. Because he is good. And his mercy shall endure. Come on, let's sing it. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Sing praise the Lord, sing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
For the gift of Pastor Poju, come on, let's celebrate God for this wonderful vessel. Hey, I just I forgot because I wanted to round up. The pastor, the boy, story of the. So they asked him to leave. One year later, God opened their eyes. So they camp there now. The whole of that camp that they were working for, fitted, charged into the smallest auditorium in the new site. When they were walking and saying they had experienced disappointment, God saw a bigger place. All that vision entered into just one small auditorium. It is, it is an unbelievable, it's like this stage here compared to this whole ground. So please, when there is any disappointment, your vision is too small. God has something bigger for you. You always have to complete the story of a man that has anointed. When you're talking about an anointed man, finish his testimony. Come on, somebody, let's celebrate Jesus. Pastor <laughs> Poju, we love you, have loved you. Come on, I want those hands up if you want to hear him again one more time. Pastor Pojo, are you seeing those hands up there? Those men say they love you and they want you back. This is not the last time you're going to see him on our shores. He has a lot of things to do. In conversation, I've heard him, he's... he's He's dreaming to do so much this part of, of, of Africa. And I told him wherever he is, whether he's in Kenya, Tanzania, wherever he will be, we are there with him. Celebrating God for his gift. Hallelujah. So I am going to come on. But Minister Danson is here. After he's done, then I can come on. But I wanted at least some four artists. One song. Praise the Lord. And I, want, I want dance hall. Huh. What is harmonics going to do? Are they here? Who is first? Who is first? Come on, come on. Who is first? Who is first? And then, yeah. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, the lady Zabu is here. The lady Zabu na iwa aliwa no. Come on, let's give them a lot of mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of us are ready to dance? Praise the Lord. So, do we have some people stars in the building? Salo lava get nam na ba me di kaslim me twans again na kanu ya ba kuye. This must be Kajambia. I am a feeling musta. On for my baba ma feeling musta. Baba ba kuzala wa ba gamboli feeling musta. Right, I'm a feeling musta. Manya kase ya buse no jaku angula di alwalda fi no yura. We are the feeling musta. Why? Feeling musta tell them. Tunaimba, 
Everybody, I am a pity musta. Man from above, I'm a pity musta. Baba bakuzala baba gambo li pity musta. Tell them, feel him, tell him, feel him, tell him, feel him, tell him, feel him, tell I'm Men gada, men gada. Say ahu. Glory be to God. Ah, cut now. We need to put some action with our voices. All right. Say ahu. Ah ah ee. Say ahu. All right. DJ ready when you are. Can we raise our hands if we believe no harm will come our way? Say, say, no way, nah. no harm will come my way. Nah. Say, no way, nah. come God will lead my way. Give them your chingy, sit it ya kuba manyanda babulunji. Siga nti kali nebi si wubinji ni mugu mugu ba manyanda kali zabilunji. Say, me see the bad mind I win. Me na go worry, come in them can't hurt me. Dan Almighty got the big eye pan me. Coulda never let no other bad man hear me. So to be my way to the, way to the, way to the security. Mind I got to read the living identity. Dancing, praising, do it till infinity. You wali kuzi kiza. Make go go. Say, say, say. Everybody, buddy, say no way, nah. no harm will come my way, nah. no way, nah. cause God will lead my way. All right, all right. If you believe no harm is coming your way this year, God never be going to watch. Master boy, Abraham, say, 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 say
be my way to dip, way to dip, it's only that security Mind that I'm not worried, I'll live in the identity Dancing, praising, do it till infinity You only could take it a kid down, so get a good To me, walk to a dark shot around it Tell me not go worry, I'm me never go and pray To tell you, do me, no me, you go and protect me Guard on guard, I'll be like my DJ Listen up, the man, has, the man of God has said, you prophesy, and then it does what? Katinjagala to prophesy, say, no way, no harm will come my way, no way, no harm will come my way. Walan, 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 say, but it's a day. We need the whole country to hear us. And when the country gets saved, they will say, when men were gathered at Kololo, they prophesied to this country and they said, no harm is going to happen to us this year. One more time, if you believe with me, let me see you wave your hand like this. Now I want our voices to be even louder than our handshakes, all right? Say, no way, no harm will come my way. Nah. Say, and the Bible said it was done. Hallelujah, men who love Jesus! Now there is a reason why there is a woman on this stage. Oh, you don't understand. I pray that God commands the footsteps of your daughters to stand in places that are unusual in the name of Jesus. I carry the anointing. Hallelujah! We are singing, we are taking over. Who is ready with me? Are we ready? We sing, we're taking over. A Jesus generation taking over, uh huh. We taking over. I chose the generation that I can hear you sing with me. We taking over. Listen, doesn't matter, you don't know me. Bullet and for a man, he knows me. I made a sin of my story because you knew me before you knew me. I just a generation, we are not scared to stand to no matter season here. Bow to no one except Jesus here. So, like, are we ready? What? What? Where the men who are not scared? Where are they? And you're swallowing, you're swallowing, you're swallowing. We sing, we are taking over. We are taking over. And Jesus said, declare it. Come on, Brisa. We are taking over. A chosen generation taking over. See what we do. We are taking over. Jesus, I don't see you. Come on. We are taking over. A chosen generation taking over. Listen to this. Lord of mercy. This generation needs your grace. Everything seems so fake. No matter what them do, everywhere data. Daddy, we are running over to Zodia. We just are running over to Sudia. We no sent to them, we not to Woodida. Commander, yes, so I have to do it. I that time is now. Better press up yourself. And this is a generation taking over with us. We go, we are waving to Jesus. Press, come on. This is where it begins for the generation. This is where fathers stand in the gap. This is where men are not ashamed of Jesus.
Thank you so much and God bless you. Sound boy. My God. Amen. We will humbly request you to have your seats. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. It's a cold, cold that we walk in through. Lay down the burden of your heart. Lay down the burden of your heart. For I know it's tough. Walk in two by two. Lay down the burden of your heart. Lay down the burden of your heart I know you never miss it oh show your father where he comes and let your father lift it lay down the burden Check somebody and tell them, are you ready? For one of... Come on, repeat these words. Tell them, are you ready? For one of... The most distinct voices... Of Africa and the world. Ask your neighbor, are you ready? 
Ask them, are you ready? Are you ready? Hallelujah. Why don't I first call my wife to say hello? Because what my what I suspect what's going to happen after. We might, we might not have the opportunity. The, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Priest. Praise the name of the Lord Priest. Wow, I'm welcome to the Men Gather Conference Season 7. It's such an honor for me to be standing in front of you. I honor the presence of all the ministers of God here. Our, our Fanero pastors our parents and all the dignitaries here. thank you so much for coming those that are watching us on live stream thank you for tuning in our Fanero family the teams thank you thank you so much for your tireless effort and work to see this day come to pass I ask that we give a big round of applause to the great men of God that have spoken to us today. Our Reverend Kula, Pastor Poju, and the minister that is coming, thank you so much for being here. I believe we can all attest that our lives are not going to remain the same again. Uh, this conference is an incredible opportunity for men to gather, for men to grow their faith, and be encouraged to be the better version of themselves, to be better leaders, to be better husbands, to be better fathers, and to be better priests. I have witnessed first-handedly <laughs> the great impact that men have when they step into their God-given calling. And so your presence here is a testament of your desire to seek wisdom, to seek guidance, and to seek aspiration, to be a better version of yourself. And to our Father, Uh, sir, thank you for your commitment <laughs> to being the man of God that he has called you to be. Thank you for planting and, and sowing great seeds of the word of God in us. We know and we have the confidence that our lives are a generation. The generations to come cannot remain the same. They cannot be ordinary. So we are humbled and honored to have you. We love you, dear. God bless you. I have a question. That's my wife. First and last. Let's get to our feet. I met this wonderful man a couple of years ago. And listen, you know, the Bible says whether it be harps or trumpets, except they give a distinction in sound. He asks, what, how, what, I mean, how shall we know? In other words, how do we understand? What is trumpeted? What, what, what is released? 
He didn't say, how shall we identify which is the trumpet, which is the violin. No. No. He, he said, except there be a distinction of sounds, how shall we know what is trumpeted? So when a generation that is so desperate to define offices and ranks without elucidating what they give. Are you following what I'm saying? Somebody wants an office without defining what they are giving the world. This wonderful man of God is one of those people who goes beyond a gospel artist. There are some you hear and you know this is a gospel artist. Their artistry announces them. But there are people who go beyond the art and connect you to God. Those are beyond artists. Those are not just artists. Art can never work in the consciousness to seek God distinct. But a heart that has been consecrated to seek God will touch places beyond the voice. That's what I find with this man. That when we go to worship, the beauty of seeing men come together to worship, a lot is going to move in the spirit. I feel healing is going to take place. Signs, miracles, and wonders are going to take place. Prepare your spirit. God is already moving already. You've seen miracles taking place. I just, in fact, as I was speaking, I felt a swelling leave a man this very second ago it was on your right hand wherever that man is wave your hand you, you, you came with a swelling on your right hand check it God is healing you right now wherever that man is wave at me I feel in my spirit there is somebody whose hand has been healed. Where is that person? Check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Oh, he's there. Come on, let's give the Lord a man of praise. Join your hands with me. Let's welcome Minister Dancing. Oh, you can. Oh, you can. I believe that belongs to Jesus. I said I believe that belongs to Jesus. Can you give him all the glory? Can you give him all the honor? Now would you raise your hands all over this place? For we have come to Zion, the city of the living God. We have come to innumerable company of angels. We have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. We have come to Jesus, the mandate of the new covenant. We have come to the church of the firstborn. Gentlemen, this is no longer a stadium. This is now Zion. And upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. And the people shall possess their possession. For they go from strength to strength, my God. Each one appears before God in Zion. If you have a prayer language, can you charge up all this atmosphere? Paul said, building up yourself on your most holy faith by praying in the spirit. Hello, Stepili in the Kato. Predisto Filane Telia Natalu. Melasto Ferrania Copella. Open your spirit. Open your spirit. It's about to rain. This is the rain. The former and the latter rain. Saliano Capelato. Where are the men of valor? Where are the Gideons 
because of this generation we are the Moses I came by the priesthood of David to bring you into a new season for this Epalos my God is here Celia Anote Lepridia Marudos to Filakete and Natalia Parodia Satire. Let your spirit man open up. Let us, my God, open up. Asha, Eluste Periana Tofi Keteliane. Lift your hands. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. What we came to do tonight is simple to glorify your name in the earth. We've come to glorify. Your name glorify your name in this land. We've come to raise the banner. Glorify your name in all the earth. Dolly Jesus, I love you. <laughs> I worship and adore you. The assignment is simple tonight to glorify your name in this land, in Uganda, in Kampala, in all the provinces. We've come to glorify. Your name glorify your name Nana no sala glorify your name in the sweet Holy Spirit you know that I And glorify your name in the Would you lift your hands, everybody, and glorify his name? Everybody say glorify. Come on. Say, I say, I say, the 
Somebody say, I have more than a song. Today, I brought my son. I am the sacrifice. I am more than a song. Today, lift your hands. I brought my son. I am your worship. my father hey. leave me at the altar with my f because the altar is a place where things are altered leave me at the leave me at the altar with my father leave me at the altar with my father Simon can become Peter only at the altar leave me at the altar with my father Saul can become Paul only at the altar. Give me at the altar with my father. Jacob can turn to Israel only at the altar. Give me at the altar with my father. So leave me at the altar with my father. Give me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my... Many came for this men's meeting, but few get to the altar. Because the altar is a place of one-on-one -on -one encounter. Leave me at the altar with my... All you need is a touch from the Father. A moment in His presence and change your life forever you better forget about your friends you better leave your phones and focus on the altar because when you're coming through the east gate you must go back through the west gate for the go from strength to strength each one appears before God in Zion Leave me at the altar with my father. I'm tired of struggling. Leave me at the altar with my father. Real men and men who know the way of the altar. <laughs> I said real men and men who know the way of the altar. Things are uttered at the altar. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my Kelo Sefredikadalabayado, my God. This is the moment of encounter. This is the moment of surrender. This is a place where your flesh gives way. This is a place where your life is changed. Leave me at the altar. Leave me at the altar. You can't help me. But leave me at the altar. All I need to do is get to the altar. All I need to do is get to the altar. It doesn't mean if I struggle to get there. It doesn't mean if I fire. If I can get to the altar. My life will change if I can make it to the altar. My life will shift into a new season. Somebody press it to the altar. 
applying the cord to the horn of the altar. Hey, leave me at the altar. 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 You alone hold my heart. Desire and I long to worship you. You alone hold my heart. Desire and I long. To worship you, I stood here, panted for the word of some my soul. Long to you, Akabarada Sate, Jesus, you are Lord. These are, uh, we've not even started worshiping. What we are doing is aligning heart. Oh, you are loud. Jesus to you. To worship you highly, to worship you highly, I live to worship you. <laughs> <laughs> to worship you highly, to honor you highly, I live to worship you. Sene pera ne kopelus ta firidi de ne kopela. To worship you highly, to worship you highly. Live to life makes no sense without you. Life makes no sense without you. To worship you, I leave. To worship you, I leave. I leave to us. Karabala sopeleke palana talada. Osta paranana manana. I said to worship you. To worship you, to worship you, to worship you. I'm desperate for you. And I, I, I'm lost without you. Remain and vulnerable before him. <laughs> and I, I'm desperate for you. Sali kili bili kumanunu sufiri diende. Jesus and I. Ah! Endless without you, visionless without you, useless without you, careless without you, I am hopeless without you, lifeless without you. 
Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Sure. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. You, 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 you. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Helpless without you. Helpless without you. And now, it's not about a song you want to sing. It's about the one he wants to hear. And now, useless without you, helpless without you. Matchless love and beauty, endless wealth. Nothing in this world will satisfy me. Jesus, you're the God that will drum dry. <laughs> Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless wealth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. You're stepping into worship now. Jesus, you're the cup. Kai. Your presence. Yeah. Is heaven to me? Your prayer is to me. Can the telebarody is the bell of God? I told you about it. Your presence is to me. Kai. Your presence is to me. Somebody just enjoy this presence. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, my God. All I want is to... There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like... Hey, presence, hey, hey, hey. hey. hey.
Kiswahili Esele Napa Osa La Paradie So I'll be here loving you all of the days of my life. I'll be here loving you all of the days of my life. Hey, I'll be here worshiping. Lift it up. All of the days. All of the days of my life. Say, I'll be here. I'll be worshiping. Worshiping. Somebody tell him. All of Say I'll be here. days of my life I'll be here bowing down loving you worshiping all the power of Jesus name let angels prosper for bring forth the roar of the and crown him. And grow I lay my crown and worship you. I lay my crown and worship you. I lay my crown and worship. Your crown can be your bank account. You better lay it down. Your crown can be your finance. You better lay it down. Your crown can be your achievement. You better lay it down. I lay my crown. And I give you the next 60 seconds 
to lay before the Lord the things that easily beset you. It may be your company laid down. Whatever it is, lay down before the Lord this moment. Real men are vulnerable before the Lord. It's at the altar that we know real men. <laughs> I lay my crown. the 
is your protector. Ella da 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 is your shelter. Then I ask the Lord. Then I asked the Lord, what name fit you? And he said, it means whatever you call him is who he answers to. Your God is unlimited. In a gathering like this, it's lifter to someone, it's helper to another, it's healer to another. Is sealed to another, is delivered to another. He says, I am who you call me to be. Take the next 30 seconds. Call him what you want to call him. Yeah. And then I ask the Lord. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Trust in you. Let the weak say. Lift it up. In the spirit. Say I will trust in. Lift it up. I will trust. Just the man, come on. Let the sing it one more time. I will trust in you. Would you lift your hands wherever you are, close your eyes. I just sense the glory of the Lord about to hit this place like never before. And if you would, can you allow me to sing alone? Ushers, get ready. The power of God is going to move all over this place. This is only moment when God walks in on us. Mm. Every gate is on the lion and the lamb. This is only moment when God walks in on us. Yes. Every gate is on the lion and the lamb. This is the moment. When the glory comes, 
There are no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there are no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. when the glory comes, mm. there are no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. ushers, help them. <laughs> when the glory comes, yes, God. There are no words to say. Yes. Oh, you are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I asked the Lord in the room, what are you about to do? He said, I'm about to make men. Men like Gideon. Men like Peter, men like Israel, Holy Ghost, this is the moment. You are the mighty God. Shalia Borado Kapalas Tefelia. Leko Bradis Tefelia. Somebody help them, help them. I sense the wind of the Spirit about to move in another dimension all over this place the angels of the lord are stands by me from the right to the left i release a surge of the spirit the one that changes man into another man Salipe Rudas the big catholic Elepirana the pala out of the monday to where i for things that were made, my God, were made from this unseen. There are realms of glory that your world must see. Dimensions found only in Jesus Christ. No limit. Open up. There is, there is prophecy over me. I cannot fail this one. I cannot fail my Lord. I must fulfill this curse. There is prophecy over you. You cannot fail this one. You cannot fail your Lord. You must fulfill this curse. There is prophecy over you. There is prophecy over you. You cannot give up now. Somebody help them. 
Somebody put your hands on your belly. Eli pala tu stepeli endeto. Osi bridi kila nateli ade. You cannot fail this one. You cannot fail your Lord. You must fulfill this cause. There is an investment of God over your life. Asha, meliki ligi. You cannot give up now. You cannot give up now. Ele pele ko pela so pela na. Ede peredi ato pele keti zi. Ada pala. There is prophecy over you. You cannot fail this one. You cannot fail. You must fulfill this curse. There is prophecy over. Hey, I cannot fail. I cannot you must fulfill this cause. There is prophecy over there. Is prophecy over. You cannot give up now. You cannot give up now. I must fulfill this cause. I must fulfill this cause. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Is a bili gidi gidi na na te. Elo fele gidi gidi ina bana tu fili ana. Ene peli ano kili du. Use peli ana tali ano se peli a. Of the bloody ata. You cannot give up now. You cannot give up now. You cannot stop now. There is prophecy over you. Ene peli ata la to do gada. Eli pili safe, seli adopera da sate. Ene mene kili piri disu, ola tola manatala. There is prophecy over you. You cannot fail this one. You cannot. You must fulfill. Where are the men? There is prophecy. You cannot give up now. I cannot give up now. Let the men hear raw in tongues. I said, let the man hear raw in tongues. If you fail in the days of adversity, it's a report card that your strength is small. Selene Miruna Natalia, until you rise, people may not rise in your family. Until you rise, a community must not may not rise. Until you rise, a generation may not rise. Eka pa kwa katali katelike, o se predi anatali adopela, o se predi kata. There is too much investment of God in your life. You cannot give up now. You cannot fail this one. You cannot give up now. You cannot fail your Lord. Etele pele kata. Yes, sir. I release the spirit of intercession all over this place. Let men go back to the altar where they groan with groanings and moanings that words cannot alter. My God, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. No music. Open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. I have come to set fire on the earth and I wish that this fire is set now. Men 
should be known for their bony tendencies. We born for a new oil. Sally Akopeliato. There is prophecy over you. Ah! You cannot give up now. I see the Lord doing surgery. Spiritual, my God. I'm seeing 2 Samuel 23. And I'm seeing the mighty men of David. Men. Men like Eliezer, the son of Dodo. These are men the Lord is carving. You had Ela Palaso Peridi Kilino Sophilia Maneto Prede Atola Sope Elusta Peradi Akataya Malatali Atalapaya Malise Velikili Anotel. Let something burst forth, for there's a river inside of you that is able to drown the world. There's a river inside of you that is able to drown the world. There's a fire inside of you that is able to burn the world. You cannot give up now. You cannot fail your Lord. You must fulfill this curse. Uganda is waiting for ah, yeah, yeah. For the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sons, not the explanations. He says it's by their fruit, not by their stature. It's by their fruit, not by their suit. It's by their fruit. There is prophecy over you. You cannot give up now. You cannot fail your Lord. Hey! No matter how many times you have missed it, trace your way back. There is an investment of God. It cannot end here. Something. Something. Your hair will grow again. Something. Your hair will grow again. Something. Your hair will grow again. You cannot give up now. Shalebelo Kapaya. Melusta Bella. Simon, Simon. On this rock. On this rock. On this rock. Will I build my church and the gates of hell? The enemy came to sift you like a wheat, but I am afraid for you that your faith will not fail. That your faith will not fail. That your faith will not fail. Akaba kaba eto pere deketa fimoti. Stay out the gate inside of you by the lane of hands. Timothy, 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 stay out the gift. Where are the Stevens? Where are the Stevens? Where are the Stevens? Where are the Stevens? Where are you? I, I, I call you by your ordination. I call you by your head. I go to your foundation for there is no foundation laid except the one Jesus has laid. There is prophecy over you. The continent of Asia is waiting. America is waiting for out of Zion saviors shall rise there is prophecy over you Europe is waiting for your manifestations your province is waiting for your manifestations Ooh. 
You cannot give up now. Your prayer life is coming back. Ah! Lift your hands like a phone. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your day will raise your name. Breathe, Lord. As I sing this song, do what you couldn't do before. If you're on the wheelchair, get up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Up on me, breathe. Father to child, spirit to spirit, I'm lighted by your word. With your breath of life, that's how I come alive. Left ear just popped up now. That's how I changed my world. Father to child, spirit to spirit, I'm lighted by your word. With your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Lift your hands, everybody. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Oh. Your day will raise your name. Breathe, Lord. I sing it one more time. Just breathe your name. Somebody receive the fresh breath of the Almighty. Just breathe your name upon me. Just breathe your name. Your day will end. It's your name. Oh. On me, breathe. Just breathe your name. Sing it one more time. Just, Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your hail, why hail, breathe, Lord. Hey. Just breathe. Just breathe. 
Now listen. Let's not sit. I want to share just a few things to give us a direction of prayer. Start by the words that have been shared this evening. I feel it's not important that I speak for a long time. I feel it's important for me to follow what the Spirit is saying. While the man of God was worshipping, I was taken aback at this God we call the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And what makes him the God of these three? Number one, we see that they all had distinctive altars. When Abraham met God, he built an altar. When Isaac met God, he built an altar. When Jacob met God, he built an altar. But listen, even deeper than that, these wonderful patriarchs all encountered a distinct revelation in God. They all found something on their altars that defined the distinctive mark that separated their voices from the noises. There are many pastors but God can separate you there are many prophets but God can separate you there are many ministers but God can separate you there are many worshippers but God can separate you not as though he didn't call them but he can give you a unique distinction that will separate your voice for his glory. That's why the Bible says, what has our father Abraham found? They all found something. No man mightily used by God didn't find something. They might not be as articulate to elucidate it. They might not be as composed to give it language. But for every man or woman that I know has been used under this earth, distinctly found a secret with God. Job 29 says, For I remember as in the days past when the candle of the Lord was upon my head and his secret was upon my tabernacle. And he says, When I speak, many Tongues, the Bible says, cling to their roof, to the roofs of their mouth. He said, when that which was departing saw me, they blessed me. He says, for my speech fell as the dew. He says, when I spoke, they desired not to speak again. May God put something on your life that when you speak, men will not desire to speak again. But listen to this, and I want us to pray deliberately. But there's a secret Isaac found too. And there's a secret that Jacob found too. Like Abraham found. If I had the opportunity to teach about these patriots, I'll tell you each what they found. But for the purposes of this conference, give me only five minutes so I can share with you what Isaac found. When Sarah was barren, Sarah we yaringa mugumba. What did Abraham do? Ibrahim yakolatia. He blamed God. Yanenya katunda. 
He says, I go childless. What will you give me? Seeing I go childless. And the steward of my house is this Eliezer. He blamed God. He says, Behold, thou has given me no seed. And God said, Okay. At an appointed time, Sarah, Sarah shall have a child. Let me skip to Jacob. When Leah was barren, Leah we are mugumba. Listen, ulira. And she wanted a child. Ngayagala muana. She failed to get a child by the grace and anointing of Jacob. If you recall at one point, because Jacob did not know how to command certain things, when a time came when Leah was not able to, to carry more than she could, her maid Zila came in her stead. Zila omuzana we na jana ayamba. Because there are things Jacob never knew how to command. Banga wali we bintu yako bo biata manya kurunga mia oba kulagira. The same with Rachel. Chechimu ne rakeri. Rachel knew who this man was before God. Rakeri yamanya omuzana jono chiyari masoka katonda. She came to him. Na jajari. And told him. Na mugamba. Give me children. Pa abana. Oh I die. Oba anfa. This Genesis thirty verses one. She walks to Jacob. Jacob. She tells him it's your responsibility. Give me children. Or oh, I die. The next verse says. Jacob's anger was kindled. Against Rachel. And he said, Am I God? Am I in God's stead? Who has withheld thee from the fruit of the womb? He blamed God. She's blaming him. He's blaming God. She says, Okay, go in my maid. But Isaac found something. Tell your neighbor, Isaac found something. In Genesis 29. No, 25. Verses 21. Rebecca was buried. Rebecca yali mugumba. But Isaac did differently. The Bible says. Bible yegamba. When Rebecca was buried, Rebecca we yali mugumba. Isaac didn't blame God. Isaac ateyanenya katonda. Isaac did not lash at Rebecca. Isaac ateyanyigira Rebecca. The Bible says he entreated the Lord. Bible yegamba yega irira mukama for his wife. Kuwa mchala we because she was buried. Kuwa yali mugumba and the Lord. Ela mukama was entreated of him. Na ina auli diso kwe kando. Rebecca, Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Jacob found something that I quite didn't see with Papa Abraham and Papa Isaac. Isaac. Isaac found something that we didn't see through Papa Abraham and Papa Jacob. Each carried a distinctive experience of something they found that the other might have not found. When Pastor Poju was speaking, he said that which is created must have been that which was prophesied before. And I remember the Holy Scriptures when the Lord came to Abraham and he told Abraham in Isaac your seed shall be called out. Come on. Did you get it? In Isaac, your seed shall be called. Now there is many dimensions of interpreting this. But interpret it in this maturation. 
that it could mean that Isaac is a preservation and extension of the blessed patriarch. But it could also mean that in Isaac, that preserved seed was called. Check somebody and tell them you're going to call upon something. Don't blame the government. Don't blame your former spiritual father. Tell them. Don't blame your color. Don't blame your age. Don't blame your job. Don't blame who hates you. Don't blame your networks. This is the time to connect to what Papa Isaac found instead of blaming God. Instead of blaming your wife, instead of blaming that man of God who speaks evil about you, you're going to speak something in these last few minutes that is going to change the trajectory of your destiny. Isaac discovered, instead of blaming God, I can fix it. Instead of accusing my wife, I can fix it. Because the attack on barrenness was not on I was not on Rebecca. <laughs> Uh, who is understanding what I'm saying? The attack of barrenness was not on Sarah. The attack of barrenness was not on Jacob. It was on the prophetic word that was spoken upon their lives that they shall be the fathers of the generations to come. Listen to me and listen good. Men of God, there are attacks on our lives that are not coming because of the families we are born in. Perhaps the issues your wife is dealing with are not her issues. They are your problem. Perhaps the things your children are dealing with they are not looking for your children. They are looking for you. Perhaps the attack on your business is not attacking the business. It's attacking you. This is the evening to turn it. This is the evening to turn it. And I want to finish with this. I promised I'm not going to teach. They've spoken enough. This is the evening. Like I told you when we were beginning. The Lord told me mantles are going to fall. Mantles of both things ancient. And things new. And all the speakers through this conference. Have been speaking the same language. That God is about to do something in Africa. You, might, you know the, dece the de deception we have. Is we think that the pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist. Who else is it? Apostle. We think that was called in the four walls of the church. But I've seen business apostles. I've seen evangelistic engineers. I've seen prophetic doctors. Hallelujah, glory to God. I want to pray with you. There is enough power here. Listen, there is enough power here. There was a time it was impossible in Uganda to gather men this much. And hundreds of streaming centers are watching online. People we could not bring here because we would not have the space. They are all in agreement with this evening's prayer. Something is happening in Africa. What do we take in mass Africa? I said something is happening in Africa. You might be watching me and you're in India. Prophesy it over your nation also. Somebody is watching and you're in Toronto. Prophesy it over your nation also. Somebody is watching and you're in Fiji. You're in the United Arab Emirates. Speak it over your nation. Tell God tonight, I walk with, back with something that makes me distinct. I find something 
that no man has ever found oh, before. Come on, say, say, I find something that no man has ever found before. Say, I connect to something that no man has ever connected to before. In Jesus' name, can we raise our hands a few minutes and speak? The anointing of God is here. We only have about five minutes to close. Come and raise your voice. Pray. Have seen the king. Come on. Upon the throne. Praise. Come on, speak. 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 Fix it. My eyes have seen the king. Upon the throne who reigns gold. Come on. Shaka Pataka. Fix your business this evening. Fix your ministry this evening. Rapa Koteke Patalapa. Reba Sombreke Telepayata. My have seen the king. Shataka, fix your marriage, fix your career, fix your body, fix those kidneys, fix that heart, fix that liver, fix those intestines, fix your eyes, fix your ears, fix your, your dream, fix your inventions. Shataka, if you're crippled, Fix. Walk. Walk. Tell that one in red. Walk here. Come on, fix it. Fix it. We fix it. We command those bonds to get in order. Let the crippled walk here. Let the crippled walk here. We command those swellings to go. Those afflictions to disappear. In the name. Jesus, Kepata Kata, Rebado Badaga, Uganda, listen to the word of the Lord, Africa, listen to the word of the Lord, come on, walk, brother, walk, brother, walk, brother, walk here, brother, walk here, brother, come on, bring him here, bring him here, my eyes, come on, fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Walk. Put up your heart and thank Jesus. Fix your body. Fix those bones. Fix it. The Bible says, Behold, I give you power to trample. Walk. 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 When a man prays, God hears. When a man prays, God hears. When a man prays, God hears. Come on, walk with me. Walk. When a man prays, God hears. When a man prays, God hears. When a man prays, God hears. That is what is going to happen in your business. That is what is going to happen in your family. That is what is going to happen in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You must move. You must transition. You must transcend. You must scale. You must progress. In the name of 
Jesus. This is your year. This is your season. This is your month. This is your time. It's not escaping you. In the mighty name of Jesus. My eyes have seen a king, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forever. Listen, one more thing. What did he say? Say bye. There is an anointing falling. What do you want to put out? Specifically for people who are called in the ministry. Of the church. I see prophets here. Wherever you are, whether you're in the back or you're in the front. You're in the front. The power of God separates you. I shall start to bring them. The anointing of the dispensation. Your dispensation is separating you now. Power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, bring them. I see apostolic voices rising out of this meeting that are going to shake the world. Holy Spirit, where are they? Bring them. Where are they? Bring them in front. Where are they? Bring them in front. Where are they? Those apostolic voices that you have called to change the trajectory. Bring them in front of the gospel in the name of Jesus. I see God accelerate signs, miracles, and wonders. The lamb will walk, bring them in front. The blind will see. The dumb will speak. The deaf will hear. The dead will rise. Put them down, put them down, put them down, put them down. The Zana, no, it's flowing. I see it. 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 Galaba. I see it. Galaba. I see it. Galaba. It has no formula. There is a young man, there is a man this evening. This was the day. You had to be defined. And listen to me. The world will hear you. I say the world will hear you. I say the world will hear you. I say the world will hear you. Bring them. Bring them the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he knows who he's seeking for. Just take your portion this evening. There are people here you've been doing business. But tonight something is going to set on your life that is more than just business. It's going to come with a unique grace and an anointing that is going to change your life forever in the name of Jesus. God is translating things. I hear the spirit of the Lord say this is the day. Listen this is the day I'm going to separate you from anybody related to you because what I put on your head nobody in your bloodline has ever tested it nobody in your bloodline has ever walked in it nobody in your bloodline has ever functioned in it receive it in the name of Jesus thank you Lord International mean people, those who came from Kenya, Tanzania, stay from there. Stay there. I just want to pray for you. We have people from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Receive it for your nation. Receive it for your nation. Take this. Take somebody take this. It's heavy, but take it. 
I said it's heavy. But take it for your nation. Receive it in Jesus' name. One more thing before we go. If you're here and you have never given your life to Jesus, I'll ask you to run here. This is the last thing we want to do. If you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, come right now and receive Jesus as your well Lord. Somebody found something this evening. You know, I, I'm seeing in the vision of the Spirit. There is a, a, a there are people here and I see what they are seeing. We are about to see the greatest move on us. And I know many prophets have prophesied it. But it's another when a man sees it. And how amazing that on this ground, by the grace of God, my eyes see what some men on this ground are seeing. I'm talking to ministers. We're going to see power. Miracles are going to happen effortlessly. There is a wealth coming to the church. There is a wealth coming to men of covenant. Governments are going to start investigating you. Because this is coming by reason of the anointing. This, this is going to go beyond your pedigree, your credibilities, your qualifications, your education level. This they will say is anointed. Because it will lend to nations. And it shall not need to borrow. It won't build only successful businesses. It will lend to nations. Evangelists, pastors, teachers who are here. Let's believe for the next level of church growth. Come on, let's believe God for the next level of church growth and acceleration for any man who believes it. Shout Amen! Amen! That Amen has moved something. You will see it. Let's get these people in. And then we go home. Come if you want to give your life to Jesus. Come on, can we give them a few minutes? This is the most important thing to God. I will not have time to call upon those who have been healed. But I know many have been healed even in the congregation. How many came, have received a miracle? Wave your, your hand. If you, came, you were sick and you're healed. Wave. Wave. You see those hands? You came with a sickness and he left. Wave. Wave. You see, those are many. I can't call all of you to testify. Are they over? Can we pray? Somebody thank God for his souls. Thank God for his souls. Thank God for his souls. Thank God for this. Let's just give him one more minute. Come on, let's. I see some are walking here. They are walking here. Badja. They are walking here. Babu Mbalaba Badja. They are walking here. Badja. They are walking here. Badja Babu Badja. They are walking here. Babu Mbalaba Badja. Wali we chise chunondola chene unya vobu tobangi Ladi, 
Gentlemen, repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died. I see some in Manifest United Arab Emirates. They are also confessing with us. Say, Father, I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory today with my heart i receive you jesus yesu christ as my lord and savior i'm born again i'm changed i'm transformed amen, amen. let me pray for you Put up your hands. He who has begun that good work oh, yeah. in your life, you will see to accomplishment to the day of Christ. Christ. God is going to amaze you. He's going to work in you. He's going to use you. He's going to preserve you to the end of the ages. You're free from all trouble, all persecution. Oh, no, all. no, 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 you're not persecuted all torment, demonic possession, witchcraft, go in the name of Jesus. Say amen. Now you see these people in orange. You're going to follow that line. I'm going to take your name and your number and I'm going to help you understand what it means to be born again. Then you can go find the Bible believing and teaching church. Or if you want, you can join Fanero. But go to church after this. Come on, let's celebrate God for these souls. Men, thank you for coming. Come on, let's celebrate Pastor Pochu, the Reverend Julian, Reverend Julian, my man of God and friend, dancing Oyekan, dancing Oyekan, the ministers that served here, the guys that set up, they set up on Thursday, set down, set up here. Tomorrow we have Sunday service. They are going to set up now. Come on, let's thank Ezra and the team, the production team, the intercession. Teams, the ushers, the security, the mobilizers, the bishops who have attended. See you next year in the next men gather season eight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may do one night. This broadcast was brought to you by Funero Ministries International. For more information, please visit our website at www.funero.org or download the Funero app to stay up to date with all the ministry programs. The Funero app is available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. Join our online family, spread the love and follow us on Instagram, Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Panero.